All right. Now I'm going to talk to you very briefly about Coleoptera. The thing with Coleoptera is I could spend years trying to teach you all about Coleoptera, and you'll learn about why in just a second. There are, in fact, entomologists, many, many entomologists, that take their entire careers just studying part of this particular order. So there is no way I'm going to be able to get through even a teensy tiny bit of Coleoptera. So I'm just going to barely give you some information. If you are interested in Coleoptera, I highly recommend uh, going and visiting our entomology museum. We've had an, uh, our taxonomist at the entomology museum who has dedicated his life to beetles, a particular subset of beetles, a particular family, in fact. And so we have a ridiculously huge Coleopteran a collection here at Texas A&M, one of the largest in the country, uh, if not the world. Uh, and beetles are a fascinating, fascinating subject. So this lecture, I'm going to talk to you a little bit, then I'm going to show you a couple of interesting videos just so you can sort of see some of the diversity of beetles. Um, but there's no way we're going to even come close to covering everything that there is. Later on in the semester, I will talk about one uh, veterinarily important beetle, the blister beetle, but that's pretty much all we're going to be able to cover in this class. If you get interested in it, take more entomology classes because this is one of the best subjects out there. All right, so Coleoptera, the beetles. Uh, coleos means sheath. Well, terra means wings. So in the Coleoptera, their four wings, that first pair of wings, have been modified into these uh, sclerotized and interesting looking sheaths that we call elytra. So you can see on all of these, these insects here, so this is what we uh, recognize as beetles, right? So if you look right here, so this is a ladybird beetle or a ladybug. This is that prothoracic region. We call that the, this um, shield, prothoracic shield. And then this is that first pair of wings. So it looks significantly different from any other first pair of wings we've seen. They are studded with all manner of sclerotin. Uh, sometimes they have some amazing uh, coloration in them. Sometimes they don't, like over here, you know, but they are completely covering the hind wings. Now, in most beetles, the hind wings are membranous. So they allow for flying. And in one of the videos that I'm going to show you, you'll see a beetle taking off in slow motion. So you can see these elytra move upwards and uh, show those hind wings. So this will allow beetles to get into all manner of different niches. If you think about the way that organisms exploit different uh, regions or different areas, they have to get under things, inside things, over things, uh, and looking at, oh, uh, odonata, right? So odonata have those really, really large wings. Do you think they could crawl under rocks or can crawl under um, uh, logs or in detritus as adults? No, they'd, they'd be ripping up their wings. Beetles have this just taken care of. They can crawl under things because they're protected, yet they can still get the benefits of having wings, being able to fly away and expand their environment really, really easily. Okay, so we call Coleoptera commonly the beetles and the weevils. Now notice how beetles is spelled there. Um, we get a lot of people confusing this uh, word beetle with the band, the beetles. Uh, the beetles spell their name B-E-A-T, uh, as in a beat of a drum. Beetles, it, when we're talking about the bugs, is B-E-E-T. Just keep that in mind. So beetles and the weevils. You can tell the difference between a beetle, common name, and a weevil because weevils tend to have these really long snouts. Look how adorable that is. Okay, so their mouth parts are in sort of this cone-like shape. They're still chewing mouth parts. Okay, this is one of those crazy, it's called a giraffe weevil. Look how crazy that prothoracic region is looking. That's insanity. All right. Now, the thing with beetles is they are the largest order in the class Insecta. They have well over 300,000 described species worldwide, and we don't even think we have scratched the surface of the number of beetles out there. So this group includes 40% of all known insects on Earth, and 30% of all known animals. So if you think about what makes up the majority of both insects and animals, it's beetles. It is this 
species or this group. So you remember back in the beginning of the semester, I had you read a chapter where somebody mentioned um, uh, the uh, inordinate fondness for beetles. Somebody had asked uh, a scientist, um, what do you think about the creator? And he responded with, he has an inordinate fondness for beetles. This is why there are so many beetles out there that that scientist talked about God as this, he must have loved beetles because there are so many out there. This is why. So lots and lots and lots of beetles out there. And this is why I just mentioned that you can spend your entire career studying just a subset of this group and still not get to know everything about it. These beetles are incredibly diverse and they have that diversity that is that is based on the fact that they have hind wings and elytra. So they can exploit a ridiculous number of niches that other organisms just cannot seem to exploit. So they have taken over many of the niches on Earth. We find them as decomposers. We find them as plant feeders. We find them as predators. We find them as um uh, all manner of things. So they are out and about. They're doing all that they do. Um, the smallest beetle is around 0.25 millimeters in length. So under a millimeter in length is the tiniest beetle. Really, really hard to see. The largest beetle is up to 10 centimeters. So you have these orders of magnitude of difference in size and shape of these different beetles. And they just, they're just going on. I could tell you stories about beetles just all day all day. So we've got, oh, these beetles that we see here. I just showed you some pictures of some of my absolute favorites. I like the shiny ones, of course. Um, so these are the gold beetles here. They're just shiny and beautiful. This is a ladybird beetle, a ladybug. I'll show you a video of that. This is a, um, a uh, dung beetle. So these beetles are responsible for taking poop and taking them away. And so these beetles will actually take um, fecal matter, especially from large animals like cattle. They'll roll into a ball. The females will lay her eggs into this poop and then she'll bury it. So basically these beetles are aerating the soil. They're fertilizing their soil and they're taking care of this fecal matter that is out in the world. How amazing is that? And they do some amazing stuff. Go look up some, some of those beetles. Oh, uh, we've got a pressed beetle here. That's all shiny and beautiful. Um, uh, elytra. This is one of the largest beetles on earth, the goliath beetle. Look how big that is. This is that. These two are the weevils. I just really love the, the coloration on this pretty blue weevil and the, the neck, quote unquote, on this beetle is just insanity. So just start looking at beetles. I can't tell you enough how amazing they are. There are two beetles that will actually produce light. Ah, so the fireflies, as you know them, we have fireflies here. Those aren't flies. Those are actually beetles. So those things that fly around at night, light up, do that flashing, that's a beetle. They do that to find mates. So when next time you are outside in the uh, spring and you see fireflies flashing, know that these are beetles flying around. They have these chemicals in their abdomen that will light up. So they, they control this chemical cascade, which is a really fascinating cascade. It's basically a protein called luciferin. Luciferin from, you know, Lucifer causing fire and devils and things, right? Okay, so luciferin, and it is broken down by its enzyme luciferase. So it has this protein and this enzyme reaction, and it's an exothermic reaction, which produces light. Awesome. So those are fireflies. And then glowworms. Glowworms are found in California and Australia and a couple of other places, sometimes in caves. These are the larvae of beetles that will uh, produce light through the same basic chemical cascade. Um, so it's just crazy the amount of things that are going on with coleoptera so they have these light producing organisms uh, i just i could talk all day so i'm just going to show you a couple videos just so we can scratch the surface of these um coleoptera and i won't talk to you all day
here are true facts about the dung beetle. The dung beetle survives mainly or solely by eating the faces of other animals. That's terrifying. Wait, that's a typo. It eats the feces of other animals. Well, that's even worse. The rolling dung beetle finds dung with its acute sense of smell. The dung beetle then selects a choice piece to roll into a bowl. Oh, that's disgusting. Cut it. Cut the clip. I told you I won't. I'm not going to narrate the footage of poop. It's just not going to happen. This isn't better. This has nothing to do with the dung beetle. Fine. The female dung beetles then judge their potential mates by the size of their balls. Oh, come on, that's a lynx. Wait, why is he stalking that Santa baby? Run away, Santa baby. After a mating pair is established, the female often attaches herself to the dung ball chariot, and the male rolls them away from the dung pile. He does this backwards by pushing on the ball with his hind legs. Imagine getting into a car and putting your head face down on the seat, and then steering with your butt. That is how the dung beetle do. Needless to say, they get lost from time to time. When it strays off course, the dung beetle climbs on top of its ball and uses the position of the sun, the moon, and even the Milky Way to reorient itself. Sort of like how ancient sailors once did. Except without the giant ball of shit. Here, a scientist uses a mirror to confuse the hell out of a dung beetle. Along the way, he must face challengers who seek to claim his turd ball the ensuing battle sometimes lasting for hours. When they have finally completed their journey, the young freaky couple digs a small hole in the soft sand. The female then lays her eggs inside the dung ball and then seals them up using more dung, her saliva, and her own feces, just for good measure. <laughs> and then when the baby is born, it eats its way out. <laughs> the circle of life. Just remember, no matter how bad your job is, even if you shovel crap for a living, at least you're not doing it naked and with your mouth and then eating it. All right, so that is the Coleoptera. Let me know if you have any questions.